Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Three, two, one, and we are back, and this is day two, Truth Revealed, the least to most effective real estate lead generation ideas. And we're going to pick up right where we left off yesterday, and this is point number 24. Remember, if you did not listen to um, yesterday's podcast, you missed the first, I'd say the five most, the first of our list of the least effective real estate lead generation ideas that a lot of agents are making the mistake of spending yes. a lot of time and money on. The bottom of the barrel. The bottom, the worst of the worst. Yes, which, you know, if you missed yesterday's, you might think, well, that's skippable, but don't skip it because you need to know what's the worst of the worst and ask yourself, are you dabbling in that? Have you, quote, invested in that? Are you seeing how it goes? You need to know, you know, why are those on the bottom of the list? Oh, I need to answer this question. Someone messaged us on Instagram asking us about... Um, yesterday we were talking about social media and what uh, really what platform or platforms that the agent should invest in. Mm -hmm. The simple answer is, without a doubt, YouTube is the most effective uh, social media platform for uh, essentially enhancing your proactive lead generation, not replace not replacing your proactive lead generation, and the type of content that you create for YouTube that really gets consumed the most are short videos. By short, I mean less than two minutes. And those are things that do not have to be overly produced or overly flashy. Uh, and I'll tell you why. And here's an interesting experiment that you guys should all do. On your phones, go to Google and then put in whatever your keywords would be. Say, for example, that a prospective home buyer in your community or a home seller in your community be, will be searching for. And you'll discover in many cases, not every case, but in many cases, the first results on like usually the top five search results that come up are going to be a list or a bunch of um, YouTube thumbnails. And what you're now learning is that because Google owns YouTube, it is starting to give preference towards uh, videos more than textual answers. That is an interesting sea change in the way search is done. Now, here's something else I'll add to that. YouTube is second only to Google when it comes to actually a search. So where people go to search for information is Google primarily, followed by YouTube. Isn't that interesting? So if you're going to be investing in a platform, definitely invest in YouTube and definitely invest in short videos. And I'll just, you know, Julie, I, we have a YouTube channel. We did an entire podcast series. I think it was a five-part series just a couple of months ago about exactly how to utilize YouTube, how to get it set up how to optimize it, what the top topics for real estate professionals are to make content around. So yes, I would agree with that. And I think that that is valuable as long as you do it right. Well, I can tell you by looking at the analytics on our YouTube channel, when we put up a short video, that's frankly a lot easier to produce than a long video yes. and requires, you know, our staff has to put virtually no time in it, mm -hmm. you know, that it'll get three, four, sometimes even 10x the response in terms of views. More people, people are being trained right now, you and your kids and everyone else to watch short form content. And that's great because short form content is easy to make. Now be very clear, the me social media and the passive lead generation things will never replace proactive lead generation in terms of effectiveness, effectiveness of essentially time utilization and the return on your investment in terms of actual dollars. So keep all these things in mind. But on Premier Coaching, we do give a lot of YouTube video training because we really do believe that YouTube is going to probably, wherever you, wh however you see YouTube now, I want you to imagine YouTube's actually going to become probably one of the big, the biggest media platforms in the world because people are going to be going there not just for watching, you know, cats eating pizza videos or whatever, right? <laughs> right. But they're going to be going there to to uh, essentially consume all forms of media. So if you have like a, an Apple TV like Julie and I do, and you, ha you have to essentially subscribe to an app like Paramount Plus to watch Yellowstone, right? Well, guess what? All that stuff's going to start living on YouTube and that's going to become the main portal for any kind of uh, media. And again, use that to your advantage when you're considering where to invest your time in social sure. media. We're big advocates of uh, YouTube videos. And here's the other side benefit. If you do want to create 
uh, content on Instagram or any other social media platforms, guess what they are now giving massive preference to? You guessed it, short videos. So the short videos you create for YouTube, you can actually republish and there's ways of doing it automatically on all those other platforms. But your primary focus should always be YouTube. But again, we have exhaustive coaching and training in Premier Coaching uh, about YouTube in particular. So please do uh, join Premier Coaching. It costs you absolutely nothing. Text the word Premier to 47372. Text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to premiercoaching.com. Remember when texting um, data and you know data Messages, rates may apply. Yeah. Message and data rates may apply. All right, so we're now moving back to our list and this is point number 24 of the least effective ways to generate real estate leads. That's right. We're working from least effective up to most effective. So point number 24, networking groups. Now, these types of networking uh, sorry, networking groups do produce random but unpredictable results, it can give you a few extra transactions now and then. It's lower on the list because it takes so much time and consistency for it to actually work and because it's not particularly predictable. You should still do it, but do more of it and more consistently if you expect results. So examples of networking groups would be BNI, which stands for Business Network International, Chamber of Commerce, Entrepreneur Groups, Investor Groups, Meetup.com Groups. You can go to Meetup.com Dot com, put in your uh, zip code in a 20 mile radius and see what's happening around you. Facebook groups, there's sure. all kinds of different groups. But Julie's talking about a, a combination of online and offline networking groups. But the point number 24 is a lot of the traditional ways of generating business from your chamber of commerce and business networking international and some of these other things. Those things do work. But the problem is, is that's not predictable and duplicatable. In other words, you cannot go to a bunch of, you know, meetups or you cannot go to a bunch of BNI, you know, b uh, builders, what's it called? Business Network International. Right. And then there's the BIA. Right. Builder industry associates, I think. There you go. I think you got it right. <laughs> Association, right. Yeah. I know, but you did good. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't go to a bunch of those and know for sure you're going to walk out of that meeting with a real estate lead, can you? You're hoping and praying that over time, you're going to weasel your way into their hearts and they're going to want to send you business. That is a very ineffective source of business because it is not predictable and duplicatable. We want you to focus on the things that are going to give you predictable, duplicatable sources of leads. That way you can actually have a real business and not just something that's, you know, essentially dependent on this, whatever breeze, sure. d you know, direction the breeze is blowing yeah. that particular day. Point number 23. Point number 23, moving up our list, email marketing. Now this is usually pretty inexpensive. It can produce random lead now and then, but it should never be seen as a replacement to actual conversations. So examples of email marketing would be an automated newsletter, market reports, any other kind of automated messages. There's lots of companies that do this. Yes, you can set it and forget it. However, are your emails even being opened or are they mostly in the spam folder? Do you call when you get a response from your email? Even though it's set it and forget it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to net you results. It's easy, it's inexpensive, but is it effective? Now, let me share with you guys a lot of uh, drill down on email marketing. Email marketing used to be highly effective and it's still one of the least expensive cost per leads that you can have, but it's also incredibly inefficient because you essentially have to hire somebody that you know knows all the email marketing um, you know, witchcraft. And I buy that. So there's different versions of email marketing, right? So let's say somebody had double opted into your MailChimp list. And these are people that have chosen and, you know, verified that they want to re receive your newsletters. Those leads are pretty good. They're not great because again, you can't mail out 500 email newsletters and know for sure that you're going to get a lead, right? We're focusing on for sure. Now, some of you are saying, I've been doing my email newsletter for a long time and last year I closed, you know, five transactions from it. Right. But you can't mail out your newsletter tomorrow and know for sure you're going to get a lead. What we're focusing in on are the things that, again, this is halfway through the list basically of the least effective to most uh, effective forms of lead generation. So yeah, we're kind of neutral on email uh, marketing marketing because we do know it can work, but understand it's very difficult to make it work. So a newsletter that's effective, marginally so. But if you start spamming or start doing things like that, totally ineffective. The Again, let's just use Google as an example. Google has gotten so efficient at making so that any bulk emails or spams never hit an inbox that it's almost to the point that it's not worth doing anymore. That's the reason a lot of the spammers have moved to trying to spam you guys on social and also through SMS because it's going to be more effective, you know, when it's trying to, you know, I got it one yesterday. Mm -hmm. It was so good too. 
they were actually sending me a notice from USPS and they totally and completely matched the URL too. So it looked like it was legit mm-hmm. saying they couldn't deliver the package because whatever the package was, right? And they gave a, you know, a package, a, par- a partial parcel number, click this link and then you have to you know, confirm your address. Okay, well, it was an SMS. And I thought this was interesting. I'll click on it. I suspected it was a phishing scam, which is what it was. And then I landed on the page. I didn't do anything from there. And guess what it was? They're not only were looking for me to put in confidential information, but they wanted to charge me. And this was the strange oh thing. Gosh. 30 cents yeah. to confirm the correct address. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Wow. But it's I mean, like a whole other level. But yeah. again, this, this is essentially where all this stuff has gone. Yeah. So email marketing, if you really drill down on it, it's, uh, you know, very, if you do spamming or bulk emailing, it's very effective in terms of the actual cost, but the actual results are terrible. So do not conflate the two points. Julie, point number 22. Yes, point number two, and you can talk 22. about this uh, 22 a, a little bit. This is blogging, otherwise known as content marketing, such as answering questions about real estate on different platforms, writing articles on your own blog, writing on other people's blogs. Now, this has a low cost of time and money and may net a random lead now and then, but it's not particularly consistent or predictable. This is similar to emailing. And again, we've spent a lot of time, Julie and I, talking through these different forms of lead generation. We're going from the least effective to most effective. Now, let me share with you the history of blogging in a very short time frame. It used to be effective. Blogging back in the day of you know active rain for those of you who've been in the business for a while and things like that. And the concept was is you write a consistent amount of articles and they were called blogs and they still are, right? And what's gonna happen is over time, YouTube's going to start giving you uh, your articles if you SEO, if you put proper search engine optimization around the articles, it's going to start uh, sending or essentially sharing your articles higher up on the search engine. So if you are trying to build authority around a particular geographic area and you blogged about that particular geographic area day in and day out, back in the day, that would actually work in getting you higher search results around those keywords and you could generate leads. But what happened was over time, mostly in the last, I would say, 15 years, maybe even 10 years, all of those rules have changed. Now, blogging has become highly ineffective. Why? I told you a second ago, because it's been replaced in the search engine algorithms by video searches, especially for short videos on YouTube. So if you're going to spend a lot of time blogging, if you're going to spend a lot of time uh, pleasure writing about a particular geographic area for the sake of generating real estate leads, understand that it is a very ineffective way of generating leads today not so years ago. And if you got a long, if you have a blog that's got a billion, uh, you know, articles on it that you've been working on forever, that you take a lot of pride in, continue doing it because you get pleasure from it. But don't fool yourself in thinking it's going to be a consistent source of business for you, especially going forward. Remember what we said, do not build your mansion on land you do not own. That is a very simplistic way of hoping uh, that you understand that if you're starting to, if you're trying to build a you know lead generation wheel spokes on your wheel remember from yesterday listeners and you're doing it uh, with the hopes hoping and praying that the blog posts that you're writing today are going to be evergreen 10 years from now and google's going to consistently show those as as top 10 search results for you know new albany ohio homes for sale uh well you're frankly wasting your time because all this stuff changes here i'll tell you something else that's really going to rock the world um, artificial intelligence. There are so much. Uh, there's so much uh, evolution that's come out, or technology that's come out that's evolving AI. You guys are probably reading about this. Is there's going to be new forms of AI chat that are going to hypothetically, maybe, dare I say, even replace Google. Where there's going to be. You can right now uh, go to. I forget the name of the website. There's a couple websites where you can go in and you can put in what you want an article to be written about. Like um, I was listening to a podcast about this actually, and someone was talking about uh, testing and it was like Elon Musk and, you know, uh, Vladimir Putin ride a donkey to Mars. I mean, it was something crazy. <laughs> yeah. And they just put in those keywords. And within the guy said within like five seconds, the thing mm. churned out a very whimsical article about that very topic. Like surprisingly good, right? It, it was surprisingly yeah. good with no grammatical errors or nothing. And the whole thing made sense. And without wasting your guys' time explaining all this to you, the moral of the story is blogging and a lot of these other types of things are going to become automated to the point where uh, it's really, again, everyone's going to do it. It's going to be so... Uh, saturated. Com- I- exactly. Saturated. 
I would strongly suggest that if you're going to be doing passive lead generation, you do invest in short YouTube videos. And like we explained, you can then essentially uh, proliferate those on the other, uh, you know, social media platforms. Oh, sure. So you could take some of your content from your blog and turn it into a vlog as in video. You know, if you like that content, you don't have to trash the content. You just change the type of content, you know, the platform you're using it on. And again, I want to just emphasize this. On our Premier Coaching Program, we did give you how many different? 38. 38 different YouTube video ideas. And Specific to real estate professionals. Right. And don't join Premier Coaching and then say, well, that's what I'm going to do. And the world's going to lead, uh, you know, rain leads right. on me. That is not at all how it's going to work. And it's not at all what we're coaching you to do. Learn to put the strongest wheel spokes in your wheel first. And those are the proactive lead generation spokes. And then use the social stuff to reinforce. So for example, someone is thinking about like, let's say for example, their listing just expired as, as there are millions of listings that are going to expire in the next 12 months. And someone's, you know, uh, received a call from you or they received, you know, maybe somehow you've gotten contact with them. They know that you are a potential uh, agent for them to relist their house with. Well, most likely what they're going to do is they're going to go do a quick Google search on you. And if they see you've created a, a decent amount of content on, say, for example, YouTube, because I just told you how YouTube's getting preferential search results, that's going to reinforce your proactive lead generation. So when you go there, they're going to have a higher level, uh, you know, higher uh, familiarity with you. But what did that start with? You generating the lead in the first place. Right. They didn't go to YouTube looking for a realtor to relist their house. That's not how it actually works. The social stuff is reinforcing, again, the passive stuff reinforces the proactive stuff. Be clear in your head because if you're confused and you're putting all your eggs in the basket of social media and passive lead generation, you're going to suffer needlessly and probably fail out of the business and that's one of the reasons I think that the failure rate in real estate has increased in the last yes. 15 years. The amount of time that an, a freshly licensed agent stays in the business has decreased. And I think it's because of this proliferation of these really not very well thought through passively generation well, there, ideas. There's more of it and you're bombarded with it more frequently. So you go out of business faster because you spent your more, more of your money and time sooner. Just makes sense, right? Okay, uh, number 21, I'm not sure if we've already covered that. Google pay-per-click, is that different than what you've already talked about? Well, I mean, pay-per-click, you guys know, well, if you don't know, I'll just give you a quick lesson. Basically, sure. when you go to a search results, let's say you're going to a search results and you're looking for roofers in you know, Columbus, Ohio, right? You're going to see at the top of the search results, there's people that are paying, uh, companies that are paying to essentially have and, and a chance at you clicking that particular ad and they generate the lead. Now, like based on that specific search, right? Now, this is number 21 at, of 31, you know, least to most effective. So we're not saying that Google pay-per-click is not effective because here's what it does. When someone is doing a search and they're putting in, you know, real estate agent who specializes in New Albany, Ohio or whatever, homes for sale in New Albany, Ohio, you're going to have a better qualified lead because they found you because they were searching using keywords that you had told Google in this example that you're interested in attracting leads from those keywords. You guys get it? So this is going to be a better qualified lead than say, for example, knocking on cold doors and mailing out postcards. But ultimately, it's very expensive, especially real estate keywords in some markets are extremely expensive. And again, it's a lot of real estate lottery as to whether or not it's going to work. Because here's the complexity of it. I want you to think this through. Not only are you going to have to write a compelling, well, here, the basics of it. You're going to have to uh, learn how to use Google Pay Per Click or hire someone that knows how to do it. Not that hard. You're then going to have to write a compelling ad that is going to make people want to click. Not that hard because there's a lot of systems out there that help you do that. Then you're going to have to create a landing page that's going to be compelling enough for someone to want to leave their information, right? You're going to have to give them a reason to want to leave their information with you, their email, their phone number, maybe. Now we're starting to get in more complexity. And then what happens after that? So think of all the things that are necessary that you master before you actually generate hypothetically a lead. You guys get it? That is a lot of steps. Those are a lot of, you know, uh, essentially what would Elon Musk call it, Th a threat. Threat vectors. Threat vectors, right? Along the food chain. Places to... you could lose them, right? So would it be fair to say then that the more steps somebody has to go through, the more threat vectors they have to power through, the less likely they are to convert for you. Is that a, a fair 100%. assessment? But again, this is the reason, but Google, in using this as an example, the reason it's probably the most valuable uh, company in the history of all companies is because they do know how to 
uh, essentially send your messages to people that are specifically looking for those, you know, the keywords. So that's why we all use it, right? Yeah. Well, we don't. Frankly, I go to YouTube now. <laughs> yeah, we use YouTube, right? Which is what I would suggest all these guys do as well. But in Google, you're going to be spending an enormous amount of money, especially with real estate clicks. And again, there's all these threat vectors along the way where you could lose that lead. And if you, unlike, say, for example, if you're selling a product, let's say you're selling women's sweaters, right? Um, and you're using Google pay per click and you're putting in the keywords, women's sweaters, you know, whatever, you know, made of this material, that material, whatever. And you're then deciding that you're going to market it to women that are 35 and older that have this particular demographic that make this amount of money that have this particular geographic areas. You probably don't want to spend a lot of time advertising sweaters in Puerto Rico where we live. You guys get the point. <laughs> there you go. So you're going to really spend a lot of time mastering that. But the, so are all your potential competitors that are also trying to do the exact same thing. Um, and then ultimately you have to have, you have to hope the ad shows up when the person's looking for sweaters, mm -hmm. they like whatever your textual ad was, they click on it, your landing page is effective enough. They actually then want to, so if you're selling a product like a woman's sweater, it makes sense that you'd have to do marketing and advertising like that to find your customer because you can't buy a list. Now imagine this, open your mind to what I'm saying. You cannot buy a list right now. If you happen to be making women's sweaters, you cannot buy a list of women right now in the United States that want to buy sweaters. You have to go looking for them and hopefully they're looking for you. You guys get it? Unlike real estate, you can actually get for free lists of people that want to sell their home. Get for free lists of people who want to sell their home. So why would you spend money looking for people that want to sell their home when you can actually use your MLS and some of the things we're going to talk about in the next few days to proactively lead generate directly to those people. You guys get it? And the reason why that many of you will be attracted to say ideas 21 through uh, 30 in terms of least effective ideas is because they require the least amount of skill. Now, obviously running effective pay-per-click campaigns requires more skill, requires a lot of learning, requires a lot of spending of money. And here's the ultimate thing that's, I think, um, really depressing about a lot of this stuff. You're generating mostly buyer leads. You're not generating actual seller leads. Seller leads is where it all starts. Seller leads, listings, learning how to be a listing agent. All your power and all your future influence will come from being a powerful listing agent. That's right. And that will be our season finale later in the week. Yes, it will. <laughs> okay, oddly so, enough. Oddly enough. <laughs> all right. Precursor. So point number 20 or lead generation spoke number 20, audio media. For example, podcasting. Now, note to self, we have a full podcast series about how to start and run your very own podcast, but also in this category of audio media would be apps like Clubhouse. And there are, Clubhouse is probably one of the leading ones, but there are other ones like that. Now, how would we rate this using our filters? This is inexpensive expenditure of money, but can be very time consuming. Ineffective if you only dabble. So don't have a podcast like once every two months and expect to get anything from it. It can be very effective when you take it seriously and are super consistent providing value and you study how to do it correctly. Now, if you want to do audio media and, you know, Julie and I are the number one uh, real estate, you know, daily real estate podcasters in the United States, at least this is the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in the United States. Um, you know, don't believe me, look at our numbers, but here's the reality. Getting audience on podcasting is incredibly difficult because frankly, there's only really one platform, it's iTunes. And after that, everyone else is a distant second. When I look at the analytics on our podcasting, like 90 plus percent come from iTunes. And so the iTunes algorithm is kind of old school and really does base it on a lot of very, you know, provable results. Why is our podcast the number one listen to daily podcast? A lot of the building of audience came from iTunes suggesting to other people that they should listen to our podcast. And it still does. But how did we get there? Because we've done thousands of podcasts. Yes, like for, literally every day. You guys know you're, you're regular listeners. So it takes consistency. It also, we, I mean, you especially spend a lot of time studying that. Yeah, we it, have. It's not just like throw up a random video now and then and expect, you know, YouTube or iTunes to do it for you. This podcast has had over 20 million downloads. Some days a podcast will get, you know, 20 or 30,000 downloads. That's extraordinary, and it, but it didn't happen overnight. It took a long period of time. So if someone wants to do audio media, uh, which we're huge advocates of, Julie and I listen to podcasts literally all the time, all the time, <laughs> all the time. Uh, I would probably lean into Clubhouse and there's similar apps as well. Clubhouse, again, I like it because 
It's uh, frankly very easy to form audience on Clubhouse. Very simple to get people to want to listen to you. Very simple to build community. We've had people that real estate agents that have, well, some of the people in our EXP Realty Revenue Share group who've started Clubhouse organizations who have, you know, Clubhouse meets that start every morning at like 9 a.m. And one of them in particular, Orlando Montiel, his group has consistently 1,000 to 1,200 agents from mostly the United States that will jump on this clubhouse every morning. So what's happened is his clubhouse has become a way that, you know, obviously over a thousand agents have decided to start their day. Ultimately, that's a Shangri-La of any kind of social media, especially repetitious stuff like podcasting or clubhousing or even making YouTube videos is you want to build audience. So you become part of their daily routine. That's certainly how uh, Julie and I feel with a lot of the podcasts we listen to and how a lot of you feel about our podcasts as well. Building that audience is Again, very difficult, takes an enormous amount of time. It takes enormous, like this podcast, as Julie and I are rattling through these 30 plus points, Julie probably has three or four hours on this content. Just just the content, then another hour to polish it. We sort of reordered some things. We talked to each other about it. And that's just on maybe a three-part, four-part series. Now, on, on the nice thing about Clubhouse, it's not a formal presentation. It's like more what, conversational. It's more conversational. And you can have guests in and all Live. kinds of different... Right. So if you're going to... But do not start if you're not going to be consistent, ultimately. A again, this is number 20 of the 30-some ideas we have. So this is right about mid-level as, as far as what you know, consistent lead generation is going to do. So if you're going to do this, your takeaway should be do Clubhouse because there's already uh, a viable audience there. And then really focus in, be not just a niche. You're not just going to choose, you know, Louisville, Kentucky. You're going to choose a particular market inside that particular market, luxury homes, something like that. And you can test different concepts and then you'll begin to build audience that way. Well, the, the great thing about this and why this is higher on the list than other things have been is because it's not very expensive. I mean, Clubhouse is basically free. It's free. And doing a podcast, yeah, you're going to have a little bit of expenditure, but we did a series explaining that it's not very expensive. It is expensive in terms of your time when you do it right, but you're not going to be shelling out month after month of expenditure. So that's why it's a bit higher on the list. Now, here's something that's interesting. You can actually, here's a, for those of you who want to do audio media, we're not trying to talk you out of it. We're just trying to help you and open your eyes to the effectiveness of it. This, like other, you know, the things we've already shared with you guys, will take an enormous amount of uh, time, enormous amount of effort to actually start generating consistent leads from it. But here's the fascinating thing that's happening. Audio media is absolutely um, on the ascension. It's going to probably become even, I, I'm, I'm very hesitant to say this, but I believe it's true. I think podcasting in general, and that includes clubhouse type apps, is going to become more prolific uh, than even videos. And here's why. Because the average YouTube video or what people are, what the algorithms are giving preference to on YouTube, Instagram, all these others are short videos. And a short video, you're just basically not delivering very much content, not very much drilled down real conversational content. So what you're going to see is people that are, people are going to stop paying attention even more so to mainstream media and they're going to start leaning into podcasting. And this is still it, it really the best opportunity in audio content and audio media, you know, syndication basically is 100% still ahead of us. And you're going to see very, very valuable leads and um, potential leads are going to be the ones that are listening to longer form content. Somebody just watching a real flashbang video on YouTube or Instagram, they're not really paying much attention. Um, that's the reason a lot of uh, essentially lower skilled, or not, I shouldn't say lower skilled. That's the reason it's easier to build um, con or easier to build audience really on YouTube if you're willing to basically make a lot of flashy videos mm. because it's low content. In other words, you don't have to be a real subject uh, expert to create videos that are going to get views on YouTube. So in other words, it's easier to get views on YouTube versus on podcasting. So if you're on listening to a podcast, and you're listening to someone talk for a half hour, you pretty much can figure out relatively quickly whether they're full of shit or not versus say a 60 minute bit or 60 second video on YouTube where they could, you know, sort of like flash something out there. Exactly. You guys yeah, get the point. And here's the other thing. And you and I talked about this on our drive yesterday about podcasting and things like clubhouse. And again, we're climbing up the list on more effective is that this is specific. If I go to find a podcast, I'm looking by topic, right? right. If I go to clubhouse, I'm going to go looking for somebody who maybe is talking about real estate in Louisville or is talking about, 
you know, how to, maybe I'm doing a, a 15 minute thing on how to sell your home yourself, right? I'm looking for something specific. It is specific to real estate, which makes it better than doing random things where I'm guessing that somebody might feel like doing a transaction. I think the old school way of connecting the dots would be, it's the same as someone walking into an open house. Right. They've qualified themselves to want to buy or sell a house in that particular geographic area, or they're just there to get the free cookies. You decide. Versus, say, for example, just bulk mailing out postcards. Yes. So someone taking the time to park their car, give you, you know, take time out of their day to walk into an open house is similar to someone that's uh, moved past just, you know, deciding that they want to live in Ohio or Florida or something. And now they're actually focusing in, drilling down. So your more qualified leads going to come from audio media, even more than YouTube content. For example, that's our theory. Let's see in the future yeah, if right. we are correct or not. But again, if you have to choose one, definitely lean into Clubhouse because it'll be you'll get faster results. But again, overall, if you want to put money in your pocket the next 90 days or less, neither one of those ideas are that effective or frankly, really maybe even considerations. Always put the proactive lead generation spokes on your wheel first. So we're going to pick up tomorrow with point number 19, and we're really getting into the weeds now. We're really going to start drilling down the things that we know are the most effective. And remember, most effective are the things that are going to require the least amount of money, uh, frankly, the least amount of time to get results. But you're going to start learning. They're also the things that are going to require the most amount of skill and effort. And here's a little secret for all of you. Be attracted to the things that other agents aren't because those are where you're going to find the greatest opportunity because you're going to have the least amount of competition. 100%. So your homework from today is join Premier Coaching. Text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to premiercoaching.com. Remember, you can join Premier Coaching now for free. Get access to all of the first level of Premier Coaching. And that does include a daily semi-private coaching call with a Harris certified coach. Text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to premiercoaching.com. Remember when texting message and data rates may apply. Hello, thank you for having watched this video. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right, and don't forget to hit that like button, leave your comments and questions below, and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're gonna love that one.